Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hey, everyone. Looking forward to a really great conversation with uh, Shannon Russell. We're going to be talking about leadership because... uh, you know, uh, you're a good salesperson, you get promoted to sales manager. You're a good realtor, you become a leader. A lot of times we step into these leadership roles without the right level of training. And so I thought, what better thing to do than to get uh, Shannon on the show? She's all about, you know, the second career. And sometimes that's uh, leadership. And I am happy to invite her on the show. Shannon, thank you so much for being uh, on air with me today. I'm excited, Umar. Thank you for having me. So uh, give us a little bit of history about yourself. Who are you? And uh, tell us about your podcast. Sure. So I started my career as a television producer. I produced TV for about 16 years. And then when I started having kids, I transitioned. I tried to figure out what my second act would be. And I opened a small business franchise in my community. And then since then, after running that for about seven years, and I still run it, I transitioned into another business where I'm a career coach and I host the Second Act Success Podcast, which is all about people transitioning and finding their second acts. Absolutely. And I think uh, one of the things that's really exciting about a second act is usually people are a little bit older and get a better sense of who they are. And from that, they can divine a career that aligns with who they actually are. And some people, uh, especially parents from a previous gener- generation, you wasted 10 years. And the answer is no. All that experience and all those insights from one profession can translate into the other. Not all of them, but sometimes you can enhance the second career in a way that no one else can because you have this history. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think a lot of us fall into that rut of thinking that our career is our identity, that they're, you know, simultaneous. And really it's looking into everything you've grabbed from that first career, all of those skills, those experiences, and really diving into what you were good at and what you enjoyed, and then making sure that you pivot into a second act that has those elements to it. And you'll be surprised how much you've accomplished and and how it can translate. I didn't think a television producer who worked with celebrities and wrote scripts and directed shows could use those skills to run two businesses. And really, I realized in my, you know, figuring out all of that out during my period of transition was that, wow, I really can manage people in television and manage people in my business. And I can write television scripts, but I can write marketing copy. And so it's really kind of looking at all aspects of what you've done and bringing it into what you want to do. Absolutely. And I think one of the... uh things we should define right now as we're talking about leaders. Uh, What is leadership according to Shannon? It is knowing how you want to run the day-to-day of your business, of your team, and how you want it to feel for everyone involved. So how you want to feel leading others and how you want to make them feel. And most importantly, just creating that teamwork so that everyone wants to show up every day and everyone is working for that same goal. Absolutely. I agree with all of that. I'm going to add a couple of things to it. Uh, Number one, it's being a leader is because people have trust in you. They can suspend their fear and do things they never thought possible. Mm -hmm. And as a leader, we inspire them to do that. And we can see clearly what they're capable of even when they cannot. And I think if we can do that, and one of the key things you used was how they feel. Mm -hmm. And I think the first thing that uh, we need to realize is that emotions are energy in motion. And that should be the primary thing that we're trying to elicit. So we want our customers to come to our business and buy our stuff. Nice. 
We want our customers to come into our business and feel like they're at home and they have such a great experience. They want to tell everybody about it. It's that feeling state is so important, not only for the people we lead our customers, but also ourselves. So Shannon, how do you feel when you, when you're being a good leader, what's the emotion you have inside you? Like what's that, uh, how do you know you're being a good leader? Because certainly there's results, but there's also kind of that feeling inside. What's that feeling inside for you? That's a good question. I think it's the almost pride that the machine is working, right? Mm. You feel in sync with your team members, with your clients, with your customers, and everything kind of feels like the communication's open, everyone's on the same page, there's clarity, and that you're all working and moving towards that end result together. So just Absolutely. fluid, you know, synchronicity, I guess. And uh, I have to mention this, that, you know, mindset is such a critical element of leadership and then how we change the mindset of the people we lead so that they do let go of some of the things that are negative. And we'll go deeper into that. But first, a word from one of our sponsors. Ready to let go of anxiety, let go of uncertainty, let go of doubt. Mindset Boosters gives you the ability to decide how you act and feel in any situation. Ready to take charge of your mindset? Go to MindsetBoosters.com. So mindset is such a critical element because oftentimes as leaders, uh, we doubt ourselves. And so tell me about uh, you and also the people that you're coaching. You know, that's a perfectly human reaction of who am I to lead or what if they figure out I don't know what I'm doing, which of course is also not true. So tell us a story about a client. You can change names to protect the innocent and then maybe something from your journey where you had doubt and how you overcame it. Well, I think there's mindset in any mindset shifts in any kind of transition that we go through. So definitely me leaving this career that I loved, that I worked for so long to accomplish and then to switch into something completely different. There was that mindset shift that I was more than what I was wrapped up mm. in for the first act, first half of my life. And so it was a lot of just going back to the whole idea that your career is not your identity. So it was definitely that shift of saying, you know what? I did it. I accomplished it. Now it's on to the new next challenge. And I'm excited for that. So shifting that to change doesn't have to be scary. It can be a new adventure. And I think with my clients now, a lot of my clients are either transitioning from one thing to the other. They're not sure what they want to venture into. They just know they need a change. I also work with clients who are small business owners, and they're just trying to grow their business bigger than it is currently. And I think it's the mind, sh mind sh uh, set <laughs> shift. <laughs> Caught myself. Um, that, you know what? It doesn't have to happen by tomorrow. And I think that's a big one because we all think, oh, if I left this well-paying job and I'm trying something new, um, I need to have that income and I need to have the success tomorrow. I think we all have to realize that everything in life is a little bit of a road or a journey. Just like when you graduate with that degree from college, it's going to take time until you find that job and you get into a rhythm. So same thing with uh, clients of mine that are transitioning to new fields or growing a business. Put that plan in place. Know that you are in control and have that confidence and then know that it's going to take a little bit of time and that's okay. And once you achieve it, you can sit back and be excited, but just that it's not going to be overnight, but that you hold the keys to get there in time. So uh, we've all had these uh, situations where it's like, what the frick am I doing here? Like things are not going well. Uh, walk me through one of those where you're a real example of this is where I was uh, so I'll give you an example. It's uh, Rupert Murdoch, who's, you know, uh, well known. I'd read this book like uh, a, a while ago, and the book starts off in uh, a fancy uh, condo in Manhattan. He's there and a senior VP from Citibank is there, and they're trying to hold his empire together for one day. And if one of the banks anywhere around the world defaults on one of his loans, the entire thing gets uh, knocked down and he's bankrupt as an organization globally. And so the VP from Citibank is uh, threatening smaller banks. Don't you dare, we will destroy you. And they hold everything together. But it was that, that crucible that got him to get to the other side and really accelerate his growth. 
And so when we get to that place where we doubt ourselves, what's the strategy that you use to kind of go, calm down, I'm not going to die. Like walk me through that so our listeners can go, oh, I could do that. I've gone through that before. I can use Sharon's advice how to uh, come through the desert intact. I think it's okay to make mistakes. And for example, when I was leaving television, I decided to take a nine to five job that was very toxic. And I just thought I had to do that, that that was what was needed for me to provide to my family since I had little ones and I was leaving a very well-paying job. So let me just get that nine to five job and work at it until retirement. Mm. I also decided to um, join a graduate school program and work towards a master's in education because to me, that was safe. At the end of that degree, I will become a teacher. So I was doing all of these things that I felt like I needed to do. And it was all of a sudden one of those moments where I sat there going, what am I doing? Just this is not, none of this feels right. None of this. And it was that wake up call of, OK, I can stay in this on this journey, on this path, and I can see what my life will be like. Or I can stop right here, do the scary thing and say no. I do not need to finish this program and I'm quitting this job because I know that I am meant for something else. And it was really a leap of faith and very scary one to say to my husband, I'm going to open a business and this is what I'm going to do. But I think in looking in yourself and knowing, okay, this long haul is not going to be, serve me as a person, as a leader, as a mother, as a wife, it's not going to serve me. I'm not going to be the best to my potential if I feel that dread every single day going into that situation. Absolutely. I think you need to listen to your body, what your body's telling you, because your mind will lie. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact science is, but go with my numbers, pretend they're true, uh, that uh, the world's fastest reader can read at an astonishing rate of words per minute with 100% comprehension. 30,000 words a minute is a photo reading technique uh, to do. And the reason I share that with you is that's just the processing power of our brain. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. You probably can't do it. But when we are uh, trying to figure things out, our mind is rationalizing so much stuff that we overlook those feelings, but pay attention to your body. You feel that dread. Here is what you do when you feel that dread or excitement or whatever is uh, notice where you're feeling it. And if you're feeling it, let's say in your chest, just place your hand there and say this magic word. Are you ready to hear this word, Shannon? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. It's just hello. Just mm -hmm. say hello to the feeling and say, what are you trying to teach me? Yeah. What is your intent? And I'll say, you're not doing the right thing. Like, why are you doing this? And you're like, Oh, okay. What should I be doing? Because oftentimes the inner voice, the inner feeling, sometimes you can't hear the inner voice because there's so much brain clutter, uh, but you can feel the feeling. When you feel something uncomfortable, we overlook it. And I think what we need to do is to embrace it because we have this mind, this body, the spirit that are all interlinked. And uh, sometimes it's hard to figure out the thought in our mind because they're so racing and spirit, you know, who knows, maybe you need to be a priest and have holy water, mm -hmm. but your body, you can pay attention to that. And I think uh, that's such a gift for us. Yeah. It's taking the time to do that. And so few of us actually take that time. And I, I always advise clients and friends of go back to your why and take that second, whether it's in the shower or on a quick walk with your dog, but listen to yourself and ask yourself, like, I love this. Hello. Are you okay today? Are yeah. you feeling like you're where you need to be? And if not, then listen to yourself. So I, I love that, Umar. That's amazing. And it's so true. And more of us need to take that time every day to check in with ourselves and, and yeah. our why. Why are we here? Why are we doing what we're doing? And a lot of us think, you know, we have to go do this seance or do this complicated thing. And sometimes life is uh, – I love – the, this quote from Einstein, number one, by the way, if you say I've got a quote from Einstein, people think you're smarter than you are. So <laughs> I'll try that. <laughs> so the quote is, you know, I don't like simplicity, but I love simplicity on the other side of complexity. Mm. So when you figure this stuff out, always at the end of it, like Einstein's version of the truth is E equals MC squared. But to get there, he had to go through mountains of ugly math. To bring it down to that simple formula that any high school kid can get a calculator and figure out whatever they need to figure out. 
And the same thing is true for in leadership and in managing ourselves. Because I think the first place we need to lead is ourselves. Mm -hmm. And to do that, uh, A, do you agree? And if you agree, what is a good way to start leading ourselves? I think, again, it goes back to listening to yourself. Uh, I was a leader since I was very, very young, always in leadership programs and always the one at the front of the class and mm. leading groups of friends. And I, so I think a lot of times it's in our personality from when we're young, but we can become leaders by simply knowing what we want and being able to communicate that. So I think communication is is key to, to really taking what that idea is and that action that you want to accomplish and communicating that to those around you. And sometimes, like we said before, it's, it's communicating that with ourselves as well to get us to that next level. Just like when you're a leader trying to get your customers to the finish line, your clients to the finish line, your, your team to the finish line, it's um, communicating with yourself and, and, and listening while you do it. Absolutely. I think uh, listening is such a key thing that we need to do. Not only, uh, uh, for ourselves, but also when we're like leading people, the people that we lead, listening to them, because none, one of the major complaints when people leave organizations is my boss never listened to me. Mm -hmm. I was in the room with the person, but I could tell they were paying attention to something else and not me. And what we need to do is to very much, uh, we need to listen to them because most people do not feel heard at home, at work, anywhere else. If you can do that, uh, this is how you build strong relationships and people will walk on broken glass to help you if they feel valued. And the easiest way to do that is to listen or listen to my podcast, subscribe to the No Limit Selling Podcast. And we get brilliant people like Sharon coming on uh, to share insights on how they make the world a better place. And so... Shannon, what's a, what's a lesson that you've learned that served you well in life? Mm, to make that spot at the table for yourself. Um, because if you're in a situation like you just mentioned, Umar, of, of you know someone not listening to you and you leave a job because your boss didn't listen, well, what did you do to get yourself a spot at that table to have him listen to you or have her listen to you. So to know that you've done everything you can to advance to that next place, um, but to make that room at the table. When I started in television production, it was all the men at the top. And there was mm. one female producer who was a mentor of mine who said, I deserve to be here. You deserve to be here as much as anyone else and just know that you can. And I just always remember that as like a 25 year old hearing that and going on with my career and leading others and being the executive in the room is that I deserve to be there. So make yourself heard. Um, and that's what you want to do with your own clients and with your customers um, is make sure that they feel like they are heard. And oftentimes I'll just message my clients in the in between sessions to say, are you having a good day? How's everything going? To let them know that you're there if they're ready to speak and you are there to listen. Because I think um, we all need that. You and I need that. And our team needs it. Our clients need it. Our customers need it. And it's just, I think being a good leader is letting people know that you're approachable. You're there to listen. And you know you deserve to be at the table and so does everyone else. So bring your voice and let your voice be heard. Absolutely. And I think kind of going back to what you said, uh, one of the things to do uh, with your boss is ask the question, how can I add more value to the organization? Mm -hmm. uh, or where, where am I adding value to the organization right now? And sometimes they're going to cite things that you don't even uh, value yourself. Like, huh? And then they're missing something vitally important, in which case, you know, okay, I need to highlight that because that is adding value. They're just not seeing it. And I think at the end of the day, to do any of that, what we need to do is to build trust between us and the people that are around us. Because if we have enough trust with that person, we can have real conversations. Mm -hmm. But when we don't have enough trust, then we need to walk on eggshells. And because uh, if you and I trust each other, and I actually trust you wholeheartedly right now, Mm -hmm. is I could share uh, uh, a deep truth with you and feel okay doing it. And if there was enough trust back, you'd be willing to hear what I said, 
without judging it and going, oh, let's figure that out. So at the end of the day, the quality of our lives, professional or personal, is the quality of our relationships. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and I think that's so important, that trust, because you... I always feel like in my other business, um, I have a very large team and I have very little turnover and I have a very close knit team. And I really value that to the fact that I care about what's happening with your family. I care what's happening with your children. And um, I ask those questions. My management team asks those questions so that everyone feels heard. Everyone feels trusted. And then they want to do the work. So as a leader, I think that's really important. Um, you want to feel heard and listened to by your team, your clients, whatever it may be, but they will feel that and therefore the work will be better and you will get better results. So it really is, it goes all the way around. It goes back and forth. And I think um, you want to have someone be able to come and tell you something because we don't know everything as leaders. We don't know how you're truly feeling if you do not tell us. So we need you to Come and tell us what your needs are so that we can address that. And you never want to feel blindsided. And gosh, when you said walking on eggshells, that might be one of the worst feelings, the most uncomfortable interactions but, I have with anyone, friends, family. But unfortunately, workers. that is the truth for a lot of organizations. Yeah. So tell me about your company. How many people in the company? I have about 20 employees in my company. It's a small business franchise, a small children's franchise. Nice. Uh, so you have child labor. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> we teach STEM education for kids. So oh, yeah. There you go. So no, no workers. All right. That's excellent. That's my kids. My kids. I put them to work. So <laughs> how do you, <laughs> so if you want to see lies, all you need to do is to go into any, uh, I'm in downtown Toronto. There's a bunch of buildings here. Go into any one of those companies and go to the wall and they will have this poster that says our values are, and then you ask the employees, uh, how much of that is actually happening? And oftentimes not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you, what kind of culture do you want for your, your organization? And how do you ensure it actually is, uh, becomes a reality as opposed to a wish on a poster? I love that. And for me, it's being hands-on and I'm running a second company um, and raising two boys. So I still find the time to be present, to be there. Um, I'm throwing a kickoff to summer party for my team just next week where we're all coming together. We're going to have a little dinner. We're going to talk. We're going to make sure we're on the same page. So it's being present because I think that guy in the top office that's sitting there and, you know, gave the okay on that poster, he's not there hanging out with his employees at the water cooler in the lunchroom. He doesn't know what's really going on. So I feel like for me, I like to be in there. I like to talk to them. I text my employees when it's their birthday or every, you know, we are con in constant communication because I want them to know that, you know what, if you call out and you can't come, that's going to affect me and my family. And so it's a trickle down effect. We're all dependent and trusting on each other. And I think that makes everyone want to show up to work and be their best. And um, yeah, whatever's written on that poster is, it's gotta be what's written. It's gotta be something that you can say to your team of employees in front of you and have them say it back. Because the last thing you want is, is people talking behind your back and saying that, you know, this isn't a good place to be. Yeah. And I think just adding to that, as you get larger organizations, what we need to do is to inscribe those ideals on the hearts and minds of people. And the way to do that is to one, walk your talk, to reward that behavior when you see it, three, capture stories of employees living up to it. Yeah. Because frankly, uh, uh, in our organization, we want our employees to go above and beyond the call of duty. That mm -hmm. sounds nice, but it also sounds like bullshit. Mm -hmm. So I was at this restaurant and this uh, uh, woman brings her aunt, her senior aunt in every Wednesday for lunch. And they have a nice lunch together and uh, Steve, the waiter, looks after them. And one day he overheard a conversation that she can't bring her aunt next Wednesday because she's on a business trip. So Steve goes and says, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll go fetch your aunt and you can have lunch here next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So take time out of his work, loose tips, go pick her up, bring her, serve lunch. And they tell that story at that restaurant because the stories are how we create folklore that makes those 
ideals come alive. So what I tell leaders is we have to capture those stories because the one thing stories do, Shen, is this, is they invoke emotion. And yeah. emotions are what make things happen, not words, not uh, repetition. And I think that's what we need to do as leaders is to create a safe place where we get people to let go of their fears and they inspire to higher heights than they ever thought possible. Can I hear an amen? Amen. That is beautiful. You're so right. And a story tells a thousand words, right? It just, it shows it in a much broader scope. My franchise, the business I own is a franchise, yeah. and they often share my story of leaving television and, and opening nice. a small business. And, and I go above and beyond by speaking to potential franchisees, and I'm happy to share my experience because it did provide this different life for my family. Um, so I think that just, you know, when you believe in something, you want to go above and beyond and help. I love Steve. That's wonderful. It's a great story. Superb. So as we get ready to wind down, uh, uh, Shannon, you get to ask me a couple of questions because, you know, uh, I'm tired of asking questions and being the host. So I get to be the guest for a question or two. I love it. Okay, here we go. So if you had a client that you were giving or a customer and you were giving all of your expertise and your advice and they just weren't listening or implementing, what would you do? So let's, let's pretend you're that uh, client. Yeah. So it'd be, uh, Shannon, uh, I gave you this advice, how to be a better leader. Uh, did you think that was useful advice? Yes. And I also noticed you're not using it. So there's probably uh, one of two or more reasons why you're not. One of them is that you feel uncomfortable doing it or you don't think it's going to work for you or you really think it's useless advice, any one of those three or something else, and just pretend you're that client, which one would you pick? Oh, I just haven't had a chance to implement it yet. Yeah, is that something you'd like to do or is it something that you just wanna put off for a while? I want to do it, but I have so many things and excuses, excuses, I'll probably put it off for a while. <laughs> right, and so I think just that short little conversation, I would certainly yeah. go down the coaching path like you could and just go, okay, so uh, is there discomfort there? If there is this fear there, and when this fear there, uh, our number one best ability for human beings is rationalizing. Rationalizing, yeah. And sometimes we pick, I'm too busy. Sometimes we pick something else. I personally go with, I'm too good looking, which is a lie. <laughs> Definitely a lie. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's how I would handle it, is to just probe and help them realize why they're not. And oftentimes, it's a level of discomfort yeah. or fear. I can't do it, or it'll seem phony. And then we get at the real core issue. So it's not the advice, it's the implementation because there's fear there. And once we figure the fear out, we can change that. Mm -hmm. So last question. I think that's great. Um, let's see. Um, what, it, what are your uh, top three or two um, qualities that you find in leaders that are the most successful? I think... Uh, tell you a story. I don't remember all of them, but I'll tell you for me personally, which ones I think are the most important. One is respect. Uh, when you give respect to your employees, you get it back uh, in return. Great. And oftentimes it's like, I'm too busy for this or take them for granted. And all it takes is a kind word and just respecting them, I think is really huge. Mm -hmm. And two is telling the truth. And sometimes if the truth is, I'm scared. Like I was just talking to a coaching client yesterday and they had an agreement with their bank to have this line of credit that they're going to use to grow their company to the next plateau. And they got all the plans in, in the works because the changing credit environment, the banks pulled a line of credit and it's put them in a bind, but they're going to figure it out and go on. But if it's like, if you hide that, because you don't want to freak out the employees. If you've got a, uh, you don't want to tell them everything, but you want to tell them where, you know, hey, this is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how we're going to get there, but I know this is the team to do it. There's power in that. Mm -hmm. So the sense of don't show any weakness and have this facade of I'm a great leader. Uh, people can see through that. They may not see clearly, but they get a sense of something's not right. 
And I think you've got enough trust between us because there's a, so here's a story I wanted to tell you. Uh, I was teaching people from tire plants where there's people that barely have a high school education to PhDs. And I would say, uh, what I'd like you to do is talk with a partner and figure out what are the top five attributes that leaders have. And so they talk to their partner, come up with their five, and the partner comes up with their five, and there's 60 people in the room. So there's a lot of data. And I said, okay, uh, uh, what do you have? And somebody gives me five, and I write the five down. The next person gives me only three because two of them are already up there. The next person gives me four or five. And before you know it, I've got 65 attributes for leaders to make a great leader. And then I get everybody in all 60 of them say, go to the number one most important attribute and put five dots next to it. So we know it's the most important. And the second most important, four, three, two, one. And everybody does that. And what was really curious, no matter which audience, whether they're uh, barely have a high school education or PhDs or business leaders or nurses, the same five leadership traits won out every single time. Wow. And part of that was having a compelling vision, yeah. great communicator, having integrity, having trust. And damn it, I can't remember the fifth one. I'm going to have to look at my notes. But <laughs> the, the curious thing was we, we may have an individual sense of what we want, but as a group, as a collective, we know what leadership is. Yeah. And, uh, and part of that is uh, the sense I get being with you today is you feel comfortable in your skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's also a, an, an important element of being a great human and also a great leader because it makes leadership so much easier when you're not pretending to be someone you're not. No, we can be more relatable, and I think to make it an you know level playing field, and everyone feels like you're you know no, being a leader doesn't mean you're above anyone else. So really, just making that that distinction, I love that. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, one of the things, uh, the last question I've got for you is this is uh, what is one piece of advice you'd like to share with young leaders that would help them become, uh, be more comfortable being a leader? Oh, enjoy it. I think being a leader and being is, is pulling a team together. So keep going if you are starting down that path and make sure that you incorporate everyone's view. I love that you brought up, you know, having that vision. You know, vision casting is such a big thing nowadays in companies. So to be able to ask everyone on your team what their input is. And you might think that's not what I, you know, the, the, the route I would go with that particular person's opinion, but take it all together. Let everyone know that they're being heard and vision cast as a group. And just keep knowing that by doing that and gaining the respect of your team and having that open communication, you're going to be able to do that in any other company or job that you go to. And even if you create your own business, you know, that should be your goal as well is to have that communication, be able to vision cast together and have that respect and give that respect. So we're yeah. to live by. Yeah, we're to live by. Shannon, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed our conversation and I'm looking forward to uh, our next. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This is great. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming. And that is the fastest way to get better results. 